This thing, I think, would actually leave my Accord 2.0T in the dust. <laughs> yes! Hey everyone, this week I have been spending time with this 2024 Hyundai Sonata N-Line. MSRP on this is about $37,310. So let's take you for a quick walk around it. We'll dive into some exterior impressions, dive into some interior impressions, and then take it for a spin. So this refreshed Sonata looks absolutely amazing. This is finished in aero silver matte. If you kind of notice, it is a matte silver, doesn't have a shine, looks very nice compared to all the other silver cars on the road today. The back is a little bit busy, but you do get quad exhaust pipes, which is really good looking. 19 inch wheels wrapped in Pirellis that are honestly completely garbage, but we'll get into that here shortly. The new front looks stunning. Got that LED light bar that goes across, completely illuminates at night, but just in the uh, daytime with the DRLs, the, just the right and left side illuminate. But you do have LED headlights underneath it and LED turn signals all the way around. The N-Line logo here. Now this isn't a true N car. I want to say that right off the bat. So um, it's not going to you know compete with the Elantra N and the Kona N that was in the you know previous Kona rip to that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trunk here. Pretty cavernous space back here. Plenty of space to store groceries and suitcases. No spare tire, unfortunately. You do get a tire mobility kit, but big rip, no spare tire. The back seats do fold down. You can control that back here. You have a nice grab handle here as well. Those quad exhaust tips actually look pretty cool. I do like how that looks. Let's go ahead and hop in the back seat real quick. Pretty nice interior here. Very nice ingress. Back here is a pretty nice place to be. There is no rear vents and that's a huge miss. Um, but I read somewhere that the 2025 N line is going to have rear vents. You do get a couple USB C ports, a mat pocket, and a pull down center armrest as well with a couple cup holders. I went on a road trip with a couple of my friends back here um, this weekend, and they were extremely comfortable. They were here back here for about three hours, and uh, they had no complaints at all. Even with the no rear vents, um, they weren't overly hot. I am slightly touching my head up against the roof, but I have three inches of leg room. I'm six foot, the driver's seat's in my position. Um, it's not bad. It's, it's honestly a really nice place to be. It's a quick shot of the dash here. Very, very nice. I like the red accents that go across the front. That's N-Line exclusive. Do get that panoramic sunroof. Kind of open the shade real quick to kind of show you what that's all about. This does open, uh, this front part only, but very, very nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's under the hood. It's under the hood of this Sonata is a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder mated to an eight speed dual clutch transmission. Very nice engine, makes about 290 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. Gets 23 city, 32 highway, and 27 combined miles a gallon. Uh, I've been averaging about 30, so I've been beating those numbers um, pretty significantly. I got 36 on my way down to Columbus and back. So, uh, pretty efficient engine here, very powerful. We'll dive into some more impressions as we drive, but man, what a cool car. In a world of vanishing sedans and, you know, honestly, what is there, what's left to compete with this? You don't have the Toyota Camry TRD anymore with the V6. You don't have the Honda, Honda Accord 2.0T Sport. I mean, this is pretty much it. Um, as a former owner of a 2019 Accord 2.0T Sport, I can properly say that this is the perfect successor uh, to one of those vehicles. Um, it honestly reminds me of it a lot and it is a lot of fun to drive. So let's go ahead and take a look at the driver's seat and cabin and then get to that drive. Up front here you do get an inline exclusive seats which look very nice. They're very comfortable. The driver's seat's power. They're both heated and uh, very very comfortable. Up front here you do get dual 12.3 inch screens. Uh, one for the gauge cluster, one for the infotainment. Speaking of the infotainment, you do get a very nice high resolution backup camera. No 360, but that is okay. The Limited, I think, has a 360. Um, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, works flawlessly. This does have a Bose sound system, which we will be testing uh, shortly um, in the video, um, so stay tuned for that. This infotainment system is really good. We've seen it in other, other Hyundai vehicles, 
and uh, you know it, there's no no complaints at all I mean you can do everything you want in here you can customize the gauge cluster and you know change it to a classic um, more traditional analog style or go to a simple number style um, it is kind of a bummer that in classic you can't get a digital uh, read out of your speed but in, in the only way to do that is to go simple but you know it is what it is this does have ambient lighting I'm not sure if you can see but there's a little bit of a glow underneath this uh, gauge cluster here and on the sides and uh, you can kind of customize that in the vehicle settings lights and then choose the ambient lighting you can even tie it to drive modes um, as well there's tons of customization um, about this vehicle that you can do in here and it's very intuitive very easy to use down here you do get some physical control to control the infotainment system then down here you get your dual zone um, automatic climate control with three levels of automatic which is super nice to see if you don't want to get blasted every single time you get in your car you can just leave it on level one it's very quiet and it doesn't just blow you away when you start the car up <laughs> um, not too fond of uh, this touch capacitive interface down here um, it works fine uh, no complaints as far as you know not registering button presses but it does get smudged up with fingerprints as you use it so that's kind of annoying wish it was actually physical buttons but um, at least it's not in the infotainment down here you do get a couple USB-C ports this USB-C port can control Apple CarPlay or charge 12 volt outlet wireless charger a little bit of space to put some things another space to put something like a key or another phone drive mode selector you do get three drive modes normal sport and my drive just leave it in normal for the video brake hold parking cameras do get a nice size center console here and I love how this center console comes out and extends and it's pretty much the exact same height on both sides here so where you can hold the steering wheel in a very nice comfortable position do get a nice size center console as well up here you do get an auto dimming review mirror no home link in this model which is kind of a bummer and a illuminated visor mirror that you kind of turn have to turn on yourself the interior materials are extremely nice um, I would say it is not as nice as the new Honda Accord, um, but I think this will hold up to the test of time. It's definitely holding up better than my uh, 2024 Honda Civic that I have. Um, that's just a rattle can, so um, something to be said about that. But anyways, I digress. Let's go ahead and take this for a spin. Um, and before I do that, please be sure to like the video. It helps promote me as a smaller creator and, you know, pushes the video out and pushes it in a YouTube algorithm. You guys know how all that works. And if you liked it even more than that, please consider subscribing as well. I publish car reviews weekly. I got a couple cars coming up soon. That's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and take this for a spin. I love this gear selector, by the way. Um, it's in other Hyundai products. I covered this in a couple other videos too. Um, you just twist it forward to go forward twist it backwards to go backwards and push in on the stick to go and park super intuitive my mom was able to figure this out very nice system frees up some space here it's not too complicated um, you know the column shifter is back and <laughs> it's very nice now this does have uh, something called active sound design where it pumps in fake engine noise um, into the cabin and I, I'm normally not a huge uh, like fan of that I uh, just kind of think it's a little gimmicky but it actually makes this engine sound pretty good you can control that in the infotainment here it's pretty easy to get into it's on the largest setting right now you can go off smallest moderate and largest we'll kind of play with that um, throughout the drive here now while we're on these crappy roads in town I will say for a vehicle with 19 inch wheels um, this thing rides incredible even the noise on the highway is kept to a minimum. Um, you know, compared to my Honda Accord 2.0 T Sport, this is leaps and bounds a nicer driving experience um, as far as like long highway trips than that was. This eight speed dual clutch is extremely nice. It does get a little bit jerky um, when you're in traffic, but yeah, that's okay. That, what dual clutch doesn't? <laughs> Most of the time you can barely distinguish shifts. As far as fuel economy goes, um, I have put total 543.6 miles on this this week and averaging 29.7 miles a gallon. And on this tank, um, I've been averaging 31. Not bad at all. Definitely beating the EPA numbers for sure.
This thing is a torque monster. It is properly quick. Let's kind of play with that active sound design. Let's go down to 35 and then like that active sound design. It gives it a little bit more throatiness to the sound. Now behind the steering wheel you do get some paddle shifters to control that 8-speed DCT. It is extremely nice. You know, it's a slight delay when you hit the paddle, but I mean, you know, for the class of the car, it's pretty responsive. in sport mode. Then to go back into regular drive mode, you just press and hold, and then it goes back into drive. Let's do a quick zero to 60 here. I'll kind of roll into it to avoid the massive amounts of wheel hop this thing has. We'll just kind of roll into it. <laughs> you guys hear that? It chirped in the second gear. Holy cow. Now, like I said, I rolled into it because this thing will just light up the tires if you just stomp on it. But holy cow. This thing, I think, would actually leave my Accord 2.0T in the dust. That's This is nuts. Uh, you know, throwing a set of nicer tires on this vehicle would definitely change everything. Um, you know, I haven't got to the handling portion of the video yet, um, where we kind of take it around the roundabout. Uh, it, it, the, the biggest drawback to this car is, well, actually two biggest drawbacks, is the tires and the steering. The tires are just straight up garbage. They're Pirellis, and they squeal around every corner. They light up at every given moment um, when you're barely even given a gas. I think, you know, throwing a set of Continentals on here or, um, I don't know, some Michelins would definitely wake this car up and give it a lot more grip and make it a nicer driving experience. Um, the steering here is very, very light. Um, honestly, you kind of feel a little bit disconnected from the road. It's kind of very similar to a Toyota Highlander, um, just effortless. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a bummer that, uh, you know, this end line, you know, sport package type deal um, has this light of a steering. It is not an end car. I've said it before. Um, you, you don't really have that raw performance. But if you, you know, want to have a fast car that's, you know, kind of fun to drive and, you know, you have some kids or, um, you know, just want a big sedan um, with a nice ride, this is, you know, perfect. You know, if you're a, an owner of a Honda Accord 2.0 T Sport or a TRD um, or a, just a V6 Camry in general, um, and you're kind of looking to upgrade to something newer, this would be a worthy successor. Um, you know, I, I, I honestly think this is a lot better than the Accord 2.0 T Sport, in my opinion. <laughs> Probably going to get roasted for that in the comments. I know the Accord definitely has better steering than this does, but... I mean, for an overall nice around town and, and long trip cruiser, this is this is an excellent vehicle. I really like the shape of the steering wheel. It's not, you know, perfectly round. You can kind of see, um, it just kind of has, gets a little flat towards the bottom. Um, you know, it, it's actually really well proportioned. And like I said, just keeping your hands on the left and right side with that raised um, armrest here. Um, it's, you know, perfect driving experience for like longer trips. Would definitely benefit from a limited slip differential, um, but like I said, this is not a, a true end car, so you kind of you kind of get what you get here. A lot of safe understeer there. You know, not too bad. Um, you know, and like I said, the 
The tires are really the huge drawback to this vehicle. A set of stickier tires would just wake this vehicle up. You do have Hyundai's Highway Driving Assist. You get the adaptive cruise control with low speed control um, and the lane centering um, assist. I've had zero issues with it. I, th this car practically drove itself um, on that long trip to Columbus this weekend. There's something to be said about that. Definitely, you know, the best in the business. Super easy to engage and disengage. You know, you just turn it on here, turn your lane centering on here, and, you know, up and down goes the speed, following distance. It's Everything here is laid out intuitively, and, uh, you know, it's physical buttons. And, you know, I hope Hyundai keeps with that tradition. I'm a little bit bummed that this down here isn't physical buttons, but, um, like I said, at least not in the touchscreen. Something I will say that's kind of been annoying this week is that the automatic headlights have just been on and off, on and off, on and off all week. I think the, I think the sensor um, to turn them on is way too sensitive because going under bridges or you know just shadows off trees, it'll automatically trigger the headlights on, and then will turn off after about 30 seconds and then another shadow of a tree comes up and they'll turn back on. Um, so that's kind of annoying. I've been noticing that um, this week. I tried to look for some settings in the infotainment to see if you can adjust the sensitivity because I know in some vehicles you can, but I didn't find anything. Now, this vehicle does come equipped with a Bose premium sound system. So let's go ahead and bring up some songs for a sound system test and see how it is. bad at all. Um, I honestly really, really like this Bose sound system um, quite a bit. Uh, I think I would rate it a high B tier, low A tier system. Um, you know, super crisp audio, um, very good amount of bass, you know, and, and it doesn't distort at higher volumes. Uh, very good system, oh, very good overall package here um, from Hyundai. we can make the tires chirp in second gear. <gasps> we definitely spun them. Spun them a little bit. Wow. This car is so much fun. I am missing the turn signal blind spot cameras that other Hondas have, but I only think that's exclusive to limited trims. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Hyundai, this is awesome. All right, some final thoughts on the 2024 Hyundai Sonata N-Line. What a vehicle. Like I said, it, it's not going to be a blow your mind driving experience um, but it is an extremely um, fun sedan to drive and I'm very thankful I got to spend a week behind the wheel of this really like the backup camera that's it's very high res I don't know if you guys can see that but I would, I would venture to say that's maybe 1080p maybe 1080 I did an awful job parking this we won't talk about that but man look at this now you can kind of see with the lights on that LED blight bar that goes all the way across. Super sharp, looks really nice at night. Really love this matte silver. Wow. Well guys, let me know what you think of the 2024 Hyundai Sonata and line I love it, it's a winner in my book. All right guys, please be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and please be sure to subscribe as well. And be sure to follow me on Instagram too for some additional content and behind the scenes. And we'll go ahead and see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.